Every swim club, every school swim team has one or two big meets they aim for. When the day of the big meet arrives, there's an excitement in the air. The swimmers are ready to swim their very best, each with a plan for winning and confident that he can do just that. How does the successful coach bring his swimmers to this peak mental and physical condition? How does George Haynes do it in developing an Olympic champion? How does he get his young swimmers to win races like this one? Thank you, Mark. Let's turn the calendar back three weeks. Thank you, Mark. Go! Yeah. Three weeks before our big event, we have completed the last of the real hard work, the over-distance repeats. Now we begin to concentrate more on pace work and quality swimming. In quality swimming, we cut down the amount of distance and give more rest between repeats. However, we begin to ask better times on each repeat. From the very beginning of the season's training, swimmers have been taught to work with the synchronized pace clocks located at each end of the racing pool. They start with the clock, and each swimmer is asked to time himself. The first group will leave on the 60 as the hand comes up to the 60, and do a 50. And they will repeat this doing many 50s, leaving every 60 seconds. Now, in this drill, we're trying to teach this group how to swim 30 second pace for a 50. We try to get our swimmers to repeat each 50 two or three seconds faster than the pace that they're trying to learn. So therefore, you may have to do 30 or 40 50s, uh, two or three seconds faster than pace. Ready, go. Watch the clock. We adapt this kind of repeat quality swimming to 100, 200, 400, and 800 yard distances also. The value of this type of pace work is that our swimmers get used to a faster cadence and adjust to a faster rhythm. 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. Watch the clock. Don't look at me. Yeah, halfway. The objective teaching broken swimming. Another technique George Haynes uses in repeat or interval swimming is the broken swim. This is how he explains it in a swim clinic. For an example, in swimming a broken 200 meter or 200 yards of swim, swimmer would go four times 50 or four 50s with 10 seconds rest between each 50, giving the total rest period of 30 seconds. Example, you might have the first group leave as the sweep hand comes to the zero or to the 60 on the clock. They would swim a 50, rest 10 seconds, till they complete four 50s. The total time uh, may end up at two minutes and 50 seconds. The swimmer knows that he has 30 seconds to subtract. We give him a total time then of actual swimming of two minutes and 20 seconds. This establishes a goal. Then the next time we swim broken 200s in practice, this swimmer knows that he try, has to try to break two minutes and 20 seconds. With this kind of broken swimming, swimmers become accustomed to faster pace. They learn to set and break their individual goals. And again, this technique can be used for various events from 100 to 1500 meters. In the preseason, from January to mid-March, the swimmers would cover about four miles a day. Now this distance is cut in half, but it's still divided into morning and afternoon sessions. In the regional and national meets, they'll have to swim twice a day, in the morning to qualify, and in the afternoon in the final competition. So they might as well get used to this in training. However, as we get closer to the big meet, the actual workout time is reduced from two hours in the morning to about an hour, and in the afternoon, about the same reduction. Take your marks. Go! As we near the big meet, we do more sprinting and dive repeats for all strokes. 
Jack Fonts is now swimming the broken 100-yard breaststroke in 57-5. We have hopes that he can set a new record in the finals at the championship. Our backstrokers are doing broken hundreds in about 52 seconds. We expect them to do 55 seconds or better in the finals. In the 100-yard butterfly, Mark Spitz is doing the broken swim in 49-8. In the finals, we expect him to come close to the national high school record of 52.2. Take your marks. Go! Ever since Dick Roth set the high school record and went on to win the Olympics, Haynes swimmers have shown an intense interest in the individual medley. Three weeks before the start of the meet, Spitz swims the 200-yard individual medley in two minutes and three seconds. To win, he has to bring this time down to two minutes. And to tie the national record, he has to do 159.7. In a broken swim, as he's doing here, where there's a short rest between each stroke, his time is 154. Three and three tenths seconds must be cut in three weeks. But if we taper him off right, there's a chance. Two weeks before the meet, workouts are shortened still more. After an easy warm-up, the workout consists of dive repeats, sprints and broken swimming with longer rests, perhaps two or three minutes rest between each 50. Haynes varies his formula to fit the individual needs of the swimmer. Some need a longer tapering off period, while some of the more rugged ones need less. The coach's problem is to sense the individual need and to get them all to hit their peak on the same day. Haynes uses rest periods to work on tactics. Now in the high school championship finals next week, it's uh, important that we know your opponent and know how they swim. And you know that your equal ability in the fly and you're better in a backstroke. So you're going to have to get out at least even with him in the fly, try to get ahead of him at the end of the back, because he's a better breaststroker. And you want to try to be even as much as possible at the end of the breaststroke so that you can bring it home uh, in the freestyle. So don't get out too easy in the fly. Get out with him. The coach has his swimmers practice breaking away on the blind side of a competitor. This may be done going out or coming back, or perhaps on a turn. One week before the big meet, the swimmers have their time trials. In the individual medley, Spitz turned in a time of 204.7, five seconds over the high school record set by Dick Roth in 1964. Fonts and Burke are a stroke or two behind. How does Haynes expect to trim five seconds off this time in one week? Rest, rest, and more rest. Rest is the big thing, but there's a little bit more to it than that. This last week, we still work out mornings and afternoons, starting out with easy warm-ups. Go! We do dive repeats, and we always finish with a good sprint to give a feeling of speed. Haynes still watches them for ways of improving technique. When a swimmer is trying too hard, he can fall into bad habits. A breaststroker may be hurrying his arm cycle at the expense of his kick. Or a freestyler might be starting his tumble turn too far out. Every fault corrected gives the swimmer a better chance and confidence. To win races, the swimmers need motivation. 
I find it helps to have our older swimmers talk to the team. This is Don Scholander, who won four gold medals in the 1964 Olympics. In other words, if one or two of you boys come in with your best performances, this would more or less set the team on fire, and I feel that perhaps uh, from right from then on, each succeeding event, you boys do better and better. And Haynes wants each one to believe he can win. Well, I don't believe a coach should give the swimmers a line of baloney, but he should build up their confidence. At this point, we know that Fonts has already beaten the 100-yard breaststroke scholastic record. So I'm reminding him that his job is to win the race and maintain his technique. With Mark Spitz, the job is to beat his top opponent. So I remind him of the hours and months of work he's put in here, that he's in top condition, and that he can do the job if he wants it bad enough. If the meet is away from home, Haynes likes to take his team to the host city a couple of days in advance. They put up at a comfortable hotel or motel where the food is good, where the swimmers can continue with familiar diets and not have too many distractions. A nice deal if you can swing it. I like to have a couple of days to get used to the pool where we'll compete. Here again, we follow our system of an easy warm-up, then dive repeats, sprints, and push-offs at pace. We encourage our boys to shave their bodies before the meet. A study has shown that this lessens water resistance, but more important, the boys say they can feel the difference. The morning of the meet, the team members stake out their rest area with air mattresses and sleeping bags. They start their final morning warm-up with slow swimming, some easy kicking, and some pulling, same as they've done all year. They do a series of push-offs at pace, breaststroke, backstroke, butterfly, freestyle. It's important to do dive sprints about half an hour before the event. This builds up the breathing and pulse rates and gives the swimmers a feeling for the race. Just before a race, Scholander would build up his pulse rate from 65 to 120. Fonts does this before his morning heat in the 100-yard breaststroke. Numbers and judges, please stand by Take your mark. In the qualifying heat, Jack Fonts concentrates on technique and holds to his plan. And here he comes into the finish, well ahead of his competitors, and setting a new national interscholastic record of one minute and seven tenths of a second. After the morning time trials comes the lunch break, and even this is put to good use. Every swimmer gets a rub down and words of encouragement and advice. In the 100-yard freestyle heat, Jameson, who expected to do it in 47 seconds, turned in a time of 49.1. Uh, Bob, uh, this morning in the heats, I think you're a little bit tied up because you were thinking about time, how fast you're gonna be when you finish, instead of thinking about how you're gonna swim the race, so let's think of relax when you get up in the finals this afternoon and, and uh, if you think about your style and concentrate on your turns, the time will be there at the end. Mark, you have a real hard triple this afternoon, swimming the butterfly and the individual medley and the relay, so the most important thing, I think, is do the best you can and then start getting as much rest in between each event as you can because time you get down to the relay, you're gonna be a little bit tired and rest is going to be important, so 
Let's get on your back someplace and think about the next race and get plenty of rest. And this is where we came in, the finals of the individual medley. As planned, Mark leads at the end of the butterfly and is even after the backstroke. He is close after the breaststroke within striking distance. His strong freestyle finish wins the race. And Spitz sets a new interscholastic record of one minute, 59 seconds. But Fonts was disqualified in the individual medley. And now Cummings fails to win the 200 yard freestyle. As a result, the boys are down. So during the diving events, the coach calls the team together. I know some of you dreamers thought we were going to win every event. Well, you won't win events by thinking about yourselves. Let's think about the team. And each of you remember to swim the way we plan. And don't be waving at your girls on the turn. Pulled out of their depression, the boys turned in great performances. Spitz sets a new national record in 100-yard butterfly. In the 100-yard freestyle, Jameson ties Steve Clark's record of 47.7. And in the freestyle relay, the Santa Clara swim team breaks its own national record of 316. The thing I like best about this meet is that all but two of our swimmers equaled or bettered their best times. Ideally, you end the season with a championship uh, swimming meet However, you may swim two or three big meets in a row. If this is the case, you can only give your swimmers one or two days off rather than a big layoff, and then hope that you can get them back up as you did the week before by doing quality swimming and make sure that they get plenty of rest. Because we've concentrated on the young men in this film, don't think that the women's team is neglected at Santa Clara. In recent years, they've been winning the AAU National Championship more often than not. Except for weightlifting and body shaving, their training is much the same as the boys. Judging by these young swimmers, certainly the Haynes method works. <laughs> 